afternoon, everyone. Hello to all my fellow panelists. Thank you so much for being here. So yes, an exciting uh, topic, not usually spoken about. Uh, I think this is one of the first times I'm in an event where we're talking about brand purpose. And you know, but we were all discussing this, you know, before we came on stage, that you know, we are talking about how you can leverage technology. But before we speak about how we can leverage technology for brand purpose, let us talk about purpose itself. Not often spoken about, not advertised, you know. Uh, you know, I do not know how many over here would top of mind always think about uh, the company that you're working for or have founded, what is the purpose that this company is there for. So if I could just request, you know, uh, with any one of you who would like to start. Uh, Anirudh, of course, we are meeting right here. We didn't get a chance to talk backstage. So maybe you can start with them, Anirudh, so you can shape your thoughts by then. Yeah, Rohit, Rohan, Anuja, any one of you on, you know, what does brand's purpose mean to you? And if you can talk about your own company's brand purpose. Thanks. Hi, everyone. Um, this is a very interesting question. I think purpose is quite a po polarizing topic and has been the subject of discussion uh, quite a bit recently. But I think it's important to understand what purpose really means. Uh, I think it's a great way to kick us off. Um, so I think there's a, there's a very interesting piece of work by the Harvard Business School that really talks about the different types of purpose. And very often we think of purpose as cause or social good. That's certainly one part of purpose, and we've seen great work by brands like Dove in this area. But there are other elements of purpose as well. You know, competence is another way to define purpose. So if you just look at an example like, say, BMW, the ultimate driving machine, it's really about functional competence. And that can be purpose too, right? So in addition to cause, um, there's competence. And then I think there's a third element, which is culture. So culture is really about intent. And a brand that I personally really love and, and their purpose resonates with me is a brand called Lululemon in the world of apparel. You know, they talk about elevating the world by giving you clothing that helps you perform at your best and, and do what you need to do. So I think there are different aspects of purpose, you know, that, that are mutually distinct but also have interactivity and it goes beyond cause. Um, I'll talk now about Castrol's purpose, um, and, and, and we like to say that we help the world accelerate progress, and we do that by bringing innovative products and solutions for consumers and customers to move forward. Uh, we're celebrating our 125th year oh, wow, this year. Congratulations. Thank you. And our 115th year in India. Um, so so that's, that's really our purpose, and hopefully through the session, you know, as we hear from the other panelists, we'll have a chance to look at some examples of how we bring that to life as well. Thanks. Great, thanks. I think you become 125 years old when you have a purpose that is not so directly related to the product that you make, you know, and you know how what the product you make empowers, then you, you can be 125 and I think going forward 200, 500 years old. Great, congrats. Yes, uh, Anuja, Rohan, yeah. Uh, I'll pick up from where uh, Rohit left off. Uh, basically, yeah, can yeah. you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. I think for me, purpose is largely, you know, what is the need that I'm solving for my customer as a brand, as an organization, because that is the customer is at the center of whatever I'm doing. And at Shimaru, you know, the one, you know, we are an entertainment organization, 61 years old, and our purpose has been through the VCR era to the digital era, entertaining this country. And the one line, you know, that we therefore stand by is India Khush Hua. What can I do to make India happy through entertainment? Is, is, is literally the brand's purpose, you know, everything that we do, we always question, is this going to make people happy? Is this entertaining? So that, that to my mind is purpose in one line. What can make my consumer happy? Excellent, excellent. Uh, I, I think just uh, taking up from what Rohit and Anuja said, uh, purpose is so important, right, for a brand to have. Uh, keeping your fundamentals, your values, your principles very intact and moving forward with short-term goals, long-term goals. 
I think the one thing uh, that we've done right at Fast Enough or the purpose that we've always had is to see a more active and healthy India and to develop products which are more accessible to people. I mean, you know, there was a time in which we would see the best sportsmen or the best, uh, you know, maybe only a few bunch of the, the, the H&I or the, the, the societies, the uh, affluent people who would get access accessibility to various uh, kinds of products in this country, uh, whether it is consumer goods or, and the best quality I'm talking about, right? There was this event when we saw, for example, uh, on TV, on television, we saw, you know, various cricketers started wearing Oakleys. I mean, there was a lot of people who were, who were like, we also want to get this, we also want to, you know, uh, we want to be easily, we want to easily achieve these, you know, these products in our own country. And I think that then became a trend that once they came in and they made it more accessible to people. Similarly, nutrition has a very similar pattern, right? Why not give the best to the people, not only people, sportsmen, fitness people, enthusiasts and experts in our own country, but also give it outside our own country and also not only give it to only this sect of audience, but give it to a much wider sect of audience. So if I have to define the purpose over here, it's more like making India more healthy, more active and being able to provide the best quality nutrition to every person, you know, in the Indian fraternity. I mean, in, in India, in, in the country, you know, as a whole. Apart from that, I think that one of the things which we've also been able to do is not only create a mark being one of the pioneers in nutrition and wellness in this country, but also we are today present in almost 30 countries abroad. And the response which we are getting from markets like Europe is fabulous because of the quality of nutrition which we've been able to uh, you know, supply to the consumers. Now all this tying back to technology is something, is, is the reason why today Fasten Up is present in, you know, and, uh, in, in, in a forum like this with such classic and iconic brands. And I think that remains our purpose continuously to striving to do better and to make the best possible nutrition. I mean, we, we genuinely do believe that every person in this, in this country should have accessibility to whatever, whatever need-based problem they have or not whatever, whatever need-based solution they are looking for or even every youngster, every, everybody who is in the, you know, who is trying to be more active and as a country we always obviously are, you know, I mean it starts from right from the top that we are promoting a very active culture, healthy culture in this country and for Fasten Up that is one of our primary uh, purposes which we've been abiding from right from the beginning and nothing has changed over this, you know, over this uh, period of time. Uh, like I said, short-term goals, long-term goals keep, uh, you know, they are something which, which keep happening, but it cannot divert you from the purpose which you are, you know, which you were formed or which you were initially, you know, you took this leap for, towards. Great, thanks so much, you know, so with that purpose, surely another 125 years though, and surely uh, we'll be, uh, you know, you'll be celebrating those anniversaries. So we have Anirudh from, you know, the tech side of, it, you know, three brain brands and here's someone who's empowering, but yes, your own purpose too, please. Yeah. yeah. No, I'll start with brand and then I'll come to sure, Pepper's sure, purpose. Sure. So we work with a lot of CMOs and uh, brand leaders and, you know, um, you know, uh, so I come from, I'm just looking at the room and I, I, I can say that I'm probably a millennial uh, and coming from a brand age, I'm still 25, I just look old. But uh, I'm coming from an age where, you know, last 10 years have been very different uh, for the Indian consumer. The Indian consumer, uh, most likely to me today, is not a 35 to 45. It's the India that brands are building for is your 18 to 30 uh, kind of consumer audience. And I think while all brands, and I feel every legacy brand or enterprise brand is right now wrestling with brand purpose. Because what happens is brand purpose is built out of business goals. And the business goals, the consumer audience, it's changing so dynamically, especially with digital, that a brand purpose can still be reevaluated, right? But fundamentally what your consumer wants should drive your brand purpose. I've seen most legacy brands have been caught up in this feeling of, you know, yeah, you're a brand and we won't change and so on. And I think that's why you see the D2Cs of today, like a boat or a mama earth, 
challenging status quo, right? Uh, every, uh, you know, the, the most, uh, so I come from the startup ecosystem in the tech side and uh, while the enterprise side always thinks about, you know, inko brand nahi samajhta, inko faster growth samajhta, but you'll be surprised that every CMO discussion we go into today, so if I'm speaking to the CMO of the HDFC bank, they're saying ki yaar, grow jo YouTube pe kar I want to build that. Now, Grow is a very new age brand looking at the fintech industry in a very different manner. Or similarly, a Bombay sh shaving company versus a Gillette, right? So I think that brand purpose has to keep reinventing. And I think it's fundamentally what the consumer really uh, fascinates with. Uh, you know, I've been hearing this one interesting thing. Is the consumer able to think about your brand when they don't have a need, right? For example, I'll take a banking case because we work with a lot of financial services companies. Um, as consumers, do we think about banking or do we think about money? So uh, as say for example a bank, should you be talking about your banking services or should you be talking about your customer's experience or thought process with money? Because I am thinking about my rent, my expenses, all of that. So we got to a point where we realized that we should just talk about better money habits or talk about the concept of money than banking. Now, if I was to take the traditional playbook, I don't think I would be able to think about money as a consumption logic, right? So I think that's my take on the brand side. As a business uh, at Papover, we are essentially partnering with large enterprises to uh, do content transformations uh, through strategy, technology, and talent, where we work with likes of Unilever, PNG, uh, and uh, ITC, and the likes to help them scale uh, content-led experiences. Now, our vision as a company is to essentially create con create all the content. Uh, so, so we have this uh, tagline that we say in our town hall that uh, we want to become the largest content company in the world that ever creates all content on web and social. Like in simple terms, if there's probably 100 million content pieces being generated globally at any given point of time, we want to do it all. And we want to build the underlying technology or provide the talent pool that can do that for businesses. Uh, and this also translates to for brands that how can we help other brands become content or media companies. Now, for me, my brand purpose as a business starts at how can I empower my CMO or how, who's my customer audience ideally um, to want to become a media company or a content company. And I think uh, over time there'll be a possibility in two years, uh, this media would also become metricized to uh, business goals. Where essentially, uh, I don't know uh, how we're seeing this, but every CMO today is less questioned about the campaign they did versus more about real business metrics they contributed to. And I think um, fundamentally basis that my business model, my uh, way of reaching out to the CMOs or being able to communicate with them will drastically change. And if I'm just tied to my original brand purpose, which is making them a media or content company, I might not be relevant three years from now. So I think it has to keep evolving. Yes. Thanks. Thanks so much, Anirudh. One of the things you did say is that, you know, how does the consumer see you? What are you providing? You know, the banking service example. So like uh, Hero, you know, Motor Corp, which is, you know, we've been working with, their purpose says, you know, providing mobility. Now, they don't say, you know, I going to sell you a two-wheeler. They say providing mobility is, I think, their vision, their purpose, etc. You know, you know, I was also thinking about, you know, so we are a B2B service provider. So we have a purpose, which is, of course, the purpose is going to meet our business needs. So we want to be the lifetime partner of our clients, providing them with sustainable profitable growth. This is our, this is there in our credentials. Okay, there's a statement. That's why I was able to say it with that brevity and clarity. One of the things, exercises that we were doing also recently was, okay, this is my purpose and it is there in my credentials and possibly when, you know, we pitch to you or your brands, it is coming in. But are we really, really communicating it very well to our uh, clients, okay? Do they really understand that? And, you know, my statement will not help, right? If I come and tell to any of our clients, this is my purpose or even if, you know, Hero will go and tell the customer, I provide mobility, it doesn't translate in that language to the customer. 
So we did things like, you know, providing success stories, case studies, etc., which shows how we are doing this. I would like to understand from, you know, and I'm sure everybody else, how it is today, you know, since we do have, uh, you know, technology, this is the session about, how is tech helping, you know, your brands, you know, to actually take your purpose, to bring your purpose to life? Uh, you know, or, or, or maybe before we get into technology and maybe or we could address these questions together. Is it important? Like we felt it is very important that our client needs to know this is my purpose without me saying that this is what I stand for. What about you? Do you think your customer needs to know your purpose or is it an internal statement and it can stay there? I think uh, the purpose, uh, see we are a complete B2C provider, right? I, my, my addressable market is all of India. So I think they will, you know, sort of live what I'm providing to them and, you know, when they get entertained, my purpose is served. So it's not like India Kushwa needs to be embedded in their heads. As long as they get entertained, I have achieved my purpose. And then coming to your first question, which was on technology. I think a lot of young people here, but taking you back to the VCR, uh, VCP days, I think the installed base of VCRs, VCPs, uh, which used to be how we, would, we could entertain the country at that time was 5 million. When we went from there to DVDs, it became a 50 million installed base uh, in uh, India. And today, with all our content available on YouTube and Facebook, the kind of reach we look at is 500 million. So with every technology advancement, we've actually been able to you know, sort of jump in reach by 10x. And that's how we think of technology giving that leap to our purpose. That is um, how technology has really, really helped uh, us gain reach. So to my mind, technology is, you know, there is of course the traditional piece, but technology is only going to make life easier and allow us to achieve our purpose much more easily and much more holistically. Thanks, thanks so much. So, yes, reaching your audience correctly. Yes, please go ahead, Ro Rohan. Yeah, so, so I think that, uh, you know, how purpose, uh, I mean, how technology helps in the purpose. I think purpose is something which is defined uh, through consistency in, in your communication, which you are doing through whichever channel uh, with the consumer, they get it. But in, for us, for example, I mean, reaching out to, Obviously, one, one part is there which defines the quality of your products and the acceptability in international markets also. But the fact that we could actually go there, we could actually tap these consumers, we could actually become one of the you know, best-selling nutrition brands in Europe in terms of for many of the categories which we do, I think that it's, it's really helped us go international in that sense. So I think that is, uh, you know, that is one of the key takeaways of how at least we use technology to our advantage. And at the same time, it's great to see that, you know, uh, you know, being sitting in, uh, in Bombay and, you know, having our offices in Bangalore, Bombay, Delhi, et cetera, we are able to do this even in, you know, big and competitive markets like the UK and the US, which is, which is good. It's great. Yes, this is great. Your entire backend, you know, of uh, market intelligence can be covered. Uh, in fact, even uh, your reputation tracking, I'm sure they've, all of you are doing reputation tracking. And technology, you don't have to go and ask each customer. With tech, you can. Yeah, please, you, you go ahead, Rohit. It's a great, great example of scaling globally uh, using tech. I think um, two things for me. I think purpose has to be authentic. And for it to be authentic, it has to be forward-looking, customer-facing, but also uh, lived and breathed by your employees and the people who work in the organization. Um, only then can it really come to life meaningfully uh, for consumers. So, so I think that's important. Uh, also, it's something that has to be built consistently over time. Um, I think, uh, you know, we, we spoke about how tech can enable scale and reach. I think that's, that's it's really powerful, uh, right? And I, I'll just share a, a slightly different example. So uh, we, we're a B2B2C B2 company and uh, there's a very large community of, I mean, if you look at India scale, it's not a very large community, but there's a community of mechanics and garages where all vehicles go for servicing uh, in India. And that's a hard to reach audience, right? And I think uh, technology can also really help you sharply target and reach the right audiences with the right messages when they're looking for it, you know? So we really use uh, tech to be able to connect with these audiences one-to-one -one 
Um, and we have a very large scale in excess of half a million mechanics on a tech platform on an app. We'll be able to communicate and engage with them and run uh, everything from uh, reward programs to upskilling events uh, using technology. So I think uh, it can help you broad base scale and reach, but it can also help you sharply target uh, and engage deeply and meaningfully uh, hard, traditionally hard to reach audiences. If, if I can ask you to elaborate, okay, one is the push content that you're doing, right? Your, what about, you know, if you can share with the audience, you must be definitely getting so much more of intelligence insights because of the way they use your app. Yeah. Anything on that you can share? Sure. So um, on, the, on the platform, we have millions and millions of transactions that happen every, every month. Okay, so uh, I think the, the data and the analytics piece is so useful, you know. Where is it happening? Why is it happening? How often is it happening? What's working where and what's not working where? And then it helps you sort of improve the program. So I think the, the, the piece that you touched upon, the ability to get real-time feedback and understanding of what's happening and why it's happening, and then help you improve the customer experience, the speed, and also the quality of what you deliver is another great piece that technology enables. That's great. And would this also, so one is you get real time, and does it also, you know, if I could ask, does it bring down your cost of, you know, the research you would have had to do otherwise, you know, without the app, you know? Absolutely. It brings down, brings down cost, it brings down time as well. Yeah. Right. So it, it really helps you, uh, and it actually pushes you as an organization to become a lot more agile and responsive. Yes. Because you're getting real feedback and you're getting it now, you know, yes. so it, it urges you and it, it, it kind of helps brands act yes. at a much faster pace than perhaps we would have in the absence of this. Yes. Yeah. Great, fantastic, great. Yes, please, Anidit, how can you add to this, yes? No, 100%, I think uh, technology is a lot about measurement and impact of a team's work. I think uh, all of us see that the creative ecosystem, the marketing ecosystem works so hard in terms of input. Um, how many of you have seen the, uh, I know it's old news, but how many of you have seen the Shah Rukh Khan Mondelez campaign, right? I think everyone's seen, right? And everyone's been using generative AI for brand amplification. Uh, simple case in point, right? Uh, Cadbury had say maybe 150,000 retailers and earlier they would do brand communication which will probably just give a sense of, hey, we'll maybe spend, uh, say, 100 crores on media, do this, do that, and there's a chance we might hit uh, maybe 50% of those 150,000. And there's no logical math to what 50%. If you go deeper to two-level metrics, there's no math. Um, but with that ad campaign, they were able to create personalized videos at scale using Shah Rukh Khan for every retailer, where he was basically just using their name and some personal, personalized information about that. And they put all of that on a mini website experience. And every time, a re and they sent that communication out through WhatsApp and 10 other channels where you have 10 other analytics to measure, like who, who opened, who clicked, all of those things, uh, at a contact and at a retailer level. And also saw how many people created those videos after going to that micro site, right? Suddenly, uh, in probably one and a half month, you exactly know 150,000 people. The funnel is 80,000 people clicked, 45,000 people opened that link, 20,000 people created those videos, 10,000 people sent messages on WhatsApp saying they're very happy. Right? Now imagine a CMO going with that level of brand impact and probably something like this just got in, in maybe two crores, which is one by 50th of uh, traditional media marketing budget, right? Which means I think measurement at very relevant and absorbable costs for the brand, which also serve the brand purpose, and at the same time give the ability for say leadership teams, management or business units to invest more uh, in this just changes things, right? So now the CMO is not fighting for hey, um, they can talk about yehoga and to do that they have supporting data infrastructure and so on and I think this is just one example but I think uh, what's most heartening is 
so uh, I went to uh, the Adobe Summit, which happens in Las Vegas. Uh, very interestingly, so I don't know how many of you guys use Adobe, but uh, and I'm not uh, no sponsoring them. It is just a company I admire. Uh, in that event, there were 12,000 an global enterprises that use Adobe AEM. AEM is nothing but Adobe Digital Experience on website. Uh, out of this 12,000, only roughly about 250 to 300 enterprises in India have adopted, adopted Adobe Digital Experience. And Adobe is like the best in class platform. Uh, but there's 4,000 enterprises in India. So there's roughly, roughly about 3,500 other enterprises which don't have that digital experience management platform yet. But in the last six months, we've had conversations with so many brands, likes of ITC, likes of Unilever have implemented Adobe AM as a measurement tool. And now whatever structure, thought process around budgeting happens through a lot of those analytics data that's coming from platforms like these. So that digital adoption of platforms like these is also a very big linkage to how marketers can talk about true brand purpose, but now also deliver that through very relevant data. So I think that's my perspective on this. Yes. Yeah, so you know, one thing what I've observed also when we were talking, so we have technology, now tech is doing a lot, okay? Tech is definitely doing a lot, but tech for purpose, okay? You know, so if you, so there, of course, I'm, I'm not saying that all of these, essentially whatever you can do in marketing, or even in your back end, like in your uh, supply chain, or in your product development, et cetera, can be actually, all those tech can be used to leverage for your, uh, you know, driving the purpose of your organization even better. So I just want to recap, but because I don't want us to miss anything when we're talking to the, or to our, you know, all the people who are listening to us. We spoke about definitely targeting the audience. Your right audience you can target using technology, so therefore you can meet your brand purpose. That is one we spoke. We spoke about being able to access you know, various regions, you know, you can sit here right now and you can access with technology whatever kind of information, whatever you need, wherever in the world to therefore enable and progress with your progress, uh, with your purpose. We spoke about uh, applications, apps that you can create which can become the hub to drive your purpose, okay? Uh, then we spoke about the measurement, you know, seeing how uh, you know, uh, you can actually, you know, is it working? Are you going in the right direction so you can measure? And you can also listen. Real time, take corrective measures, respond, act to drive your purpose. Is there anything else? Are we missing something over here? Maybe what about AI, you know, use of AI uh, for a purpose? Has anyone done any work? And I guess uh, I, you would want to speak a little yeah, bit yeah. on it. No, yeah. we were uh, the first 100 users to ever use GPT-3, uh, not chat GPT. So this is 2019 and we're talking about. Uh, so we're in the business of content fundamentally and content obviously is the first use case that comes to mind when you think about AI. And uh, the model Pepper started off with was an expert-led marketplace platform where we were helping enterprises with subject matter experts to produce high quality content. The moment we realized that generative AI is going to play a huge role, we thought that if you put content on a number line of one to 10, one to four, which is high volume, low value content will instantly get automated through AI. Five to 10 will need experts enabled through AI. Um, and I can tell you, um, I don't know uh, uh, how, how many of you know this, but Coca-Cola, which is one of the largest enterprise brands out there, has a 450 member generative AI team that is in-house, that is just working towards bringing efficiencies across every single marketing department in Coca-Cola, and that marketing department size is roughly about 4,000 people, right? And these uh, generative AI capabilities, while I know a lot of us, uh, AI in video is still far, but uh, at least on the, on the tech side of things, we're seeing that the amount of efficiency, um, and it's not just a 10% productivity gain, it is a lot of times changing how teams work, operate at scale. Uh, another example is right now we're doing something very interesting with TCS. Um, now TCS is roughly about 500 marketers who have 100 jobs to be done on a monthly basis. This could be everything from creating RFPs or briefs for agencies 
to uh, writing copy or to writing press releases that have to go in the next three hours or to creating LinkedIn content or hundred other things. What we're doing is, and at the same time, TCS has a brand tonality, right? You have to be able to talk at the same level of measurement structure. Um, so just no one can, like, it's not easy for anyone else to do it. We're right now creating this foundational small language model for TCS, which what it will enable them to do is almost imagine it's a small language mo model fine-tuned on roughly 5,000 to 10,000 assets that have historically been produced by TCS. It could be social media posts, blogs, website pages, URLs. The model ingests all of that data. Now, that outcome, that uh, structure that uh, TCS teams can use is, we have something on a Pepper platform, uh, it's very customized prompts, uh, fine-tuned on all of this data, that can allow all 400 people in their team across 20 BUs, different geographies, to produce on-brand content. Excellent. And this yeah. on-brand content can be produced at any kind of scale. So what I'm simply saying is, imagine if one has to create 150 email campaign journeys for 10 user personas, which would have taken typically nine months to execute, is done by an in-house team member of two people, where they've already seen 100 brand, like uh, email nurture sequences fed into engines, and this is now on-brand content being created. And this now reduces the need for just so much time and redundancy yes. and human productivity. So our promise to marketers there is, hey, get your teams to be more working more on strategic work that enables your team and you to drive productivity and use technology and yeah. wherever you want to integrate yes. talent. Yeah, so absolutely, absolutely. So tech, AI is enabling us to collapse time and therefore cause yeah. a faster turnaround, etc. You you wanted to add, uh, yes. No, just, a, just a quick build, agreeing violently with you. I think uh, the role of personalization, and I think it's become a consumer expectation, right? Consumers yeah. are sharing data. They expect companies to handle their data with care, but then also use that data to create meaningful experiences for consumers, right? And I think technology is allowing us to do that, and there are various ways. Most basic would be looking at audience segments, behavioral insights, and then customizing communication and journey based on that. And I think one, there's so many great things about being digital, and we heard about those. I think one of the challenges with digital is also attention, right? Um, and I think the ability to personalize and customize then allows you to really drive that attention through digital, which is probably one of the big challenges that uh, brands and marketers have today. Uh, so I think that's a great role that technology is playing. And I can then communicate to somebody based on what they care about that's consistent with my purpose. And that's really powerful. Great. Thanks, thanks. Yes, uh, you want to add, please? Yeah, yeah I think uh, additionally to you know the points which were mentioned, which are like bang on point, uh, I think that what also it enables us to do is that uh, you know we are able to for example we are able to provide customers uh, maybe one or two particular products in the format that they also desire we don't have to go you know previously back in the day before uh, b when you had to make a when you did a campaign or when you had to get into like hardcore sales of a particular product it would always be there would always be a manufacturing challenge. I think that because of the data analytics that you get today through technology, I think it, is, it enables brands like ours, like how uh, uh, he was just saying, that basically we can, we can enable this to reach the consumer in the format they desire, maintaining our efficiencies. I think that is one of the key things which has come across in the last, uh, maybe in the last five years, in the last four years, which has helped us and helped brands like us, uh, you know, D2C brands mainly also, in, uh, in focusing more and taking the leap towards certain, uh, certain, certain bets which you want to take. Great. Yes, Anuja. Absolutely agree. And just building on what has been said, I think what uh, personalization and technology also helps us do is it's a two-way communication. I think to date, all of us marketeers are used to, you know, sort of in the traditional sense, you know, throughout communication, wait for your brand scores and your researches to happen and then hear from what it is that the consumer has liked or wait for the sales numbers to come in. But now feedback is so instant on social media in terms of, you know, the, the listening that you do. 
and that makes that allows you to hear what the consumer is saying allows you to put the brand's authentic self in front of the consumer at all times and to my mind also similar to what rohan said helps you actually come up with new products within your brand so for example some of the listening that we have done has helped us think of the uh, next content piece that our consumers will be excited about because i know my core consumer i know what it is that they like and perhaps there is a gap today in the content offering that we can then solve so it it also sort of you know it's it's almost like reversing the funnel and you know understanding from the consumer to create the product rather than create the product and tell the consumer about it so i think technology has just made the funnel inverted upside down smaller you know all versions yeah excellent you know this last point you spoke about about consumer response and today we we are ordering quick commerce we want everything instantly and definitely customer response i'm sure all of you when you're working with your orm agency you're asking bring the tad down five minutes 10 minutes so uh, you know so we we built a product a conversational bot uh, you know to be able to completely speak about your domain because customer wants that the traditional bot which the bot market was what just about four or five years old and in that that's changing into conversational uh, bot so great i think we've had a great discussion and i hope there's a lot that uh, the audience is able to take away from what we have all discussed any you know we are on zero minutes uh, right now so any last minute uh, add-ons or we can just close the session right so I, do we have time for questions or do we just close Yes okay so thank you so much for your patient listening thank you so much all of you for great wonderful insights thank you